everybody. Hi, guys. I'm back in the beautiful and holy city of Salt Lake City, Utah. And this is... Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank. And I'm Dan. And here we are, (laughs) chatting away. (laughs) Yeah, coming up on today's episode. We are going to talk... About Dan's little adventure, my yes, he, he you know we we mentioned it that he was on a trip. Did we? I don't think did we I mention we, that you were going to India? I think we said India at some point. I'm yeah. not sure. I think you might have mentioned you and Adam it may when have you said were something. Leaving or yeah. Adam and I said. But anyway, so Dan was in India. I was, and he had a a, a transformative spiritual. It was experience. something. It was something. I don't know that I'm going to go as far as transformative and spiritual. Transformative, maybe. Transformative. It sounds transformative. It was pretty... It, it was a thing. We'll talk about it, but my God, people. India. It's it's like it's a whole different country. Uh, it's probably more like it's a whole different world. <laughs> a whole new world. Yes, it is that. It yeah. is that. Because or it's I've, whole... I've been to other countries. Yeah. And they are different. <laughs> Not like this, though. <laughs> this is a whole different kind of different. Oh, it's good to be back. Oh, uh, well, it's good to be back. You know, Dan, it's good to have you. Although back. Uh, I will say that that Adam and Mackenzie did a a lovely job yeah. filling in for me. Yeah, it was it was nice. It was uh, it was great. You know, it's it's fun. I think to try some new things like we sure. did with Mackenzie. And, sure, but it's always good, just good to get back to back, back, back to, to the back the to me. Back to my awesomeness. Well, more to the, the routine. The awesomeness that exists in me. I'm thinking the routine, personally. Rude. <laughs> but well, 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 welcome back. Dan. Thank you. Thank we, you very much. We're, we are glad to have you back. <laughs> you <know>. So, <laughs> Wow, you're speaking for... You, is that the royal we, or are you speaking for all of the listeners? Well, me and this glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to start on a story before, uh, before you uh, fa- oh. fake... Uh, before I feign fave. The, 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 yeah, <laughs> fake but, happiness that you're back. Right, right, right. <laughs> Any further. Uh, so, s- film news. You and I are both filmy kind of guys. We yeah. enjoy a nice film. Yeah, I, I do at that. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you'll you recall that uh, this is the year of many, many ho- big budget Hollywood mm-hmm. Jesus type films. Oh, yeah. It's, it's Bible, important. Yeah. Bible films. Yeah, 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 yeah. The biggest one probably or the one that you're going to hear most about right now is Noah. Right. Starring Russell Crowe. As Noah? As Noah. Okay. Good. And Darren Aronofsky directing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or as I like to call him, just Darrenofsky. Sure, yeah. Might as well and he's, he's famous for? Black Swan mm-hmm. and, and the, what, The Fountain? The Fountain and the uh, the, the, the one with the, the, the shooting up. <laughs> Requiem for a Dream. Requiem for a Dream, that's <laughs> it. It's the one with the shooting up. And the hand gesture was nice, too. It's too bad our <laughs> listeners couldn't see what you, your hand gesture as you're trying to uh, yeah. make that clear. Um, anyway, so there's been uh, Aronofsky himself, Darinovsky himself, uh-huh. a little, little displeased with uh, Paramount Pictures over this one. Yeah, well, Why? They've decided to uh, to add something to the film. Oh, what's that? Uh, a disclaimer. <laughs> at at the request of the National Religious Broadcasters, what? they okay. which is apparently oh, no. a group that yeah, this does not start good, does it? Oh no! They're uh, they're adding a disclaimer which reads in part. The film is inspired by the story of Noah, mm. while artistic license has been taken. Okay. We sure. believe this film to be the true to the essence, values, and integrity of a story that is the cornerstone of faith for millions of people worldwide. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second. <laughs> the cornerstone of uh, faith? A cornerstone. Oh, a cornerstone. Yeah. Even a cornerstone. Stone. Like, the story of Noah... Is it really that important Here's when it the, comes down to well, like your salvation and that, whatnot? That depends on who you ask. If you ask uh, me, it's a really, really stupid story. It's a dumb story. It's the dumb. What do you learn from the story of Noah besides maybe <laughs> obedience? Rainbows are pretty. I think you get that yeah, one at the end there. Yeah. Well, the rainbows are a promise. They are. <laughs> They're, they're God's promise. Oh Jesus! I mean, honestly, I was thinking about this because I'm I I was at a movie just uh, the other day and I was watching the trailers and now up comes the trailer for Noah and mm. I just thought, as you know, as a as a filmmaker myself, I'm I'm not a filmmaker, I'm not a wildly experienced filmmaker, but I've made a couple films. But as a filmmaker, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be interesting to try and take the story of Noah 
and actually try and make any kind of logical sense out of it whatsoever. Sure. To try. I mean, just as an exercise in storytelling. Okay. To try and make that an interesting, valuable, like viable yeah. story. Like because it's you, not. Be, well, because the biblical story yeah. is so stupid. Yeah. Like, how do you possibly make that a story that adults could care a shit about? Well, and that actually works on a human level right. rather than just like this, like buying into the mysticism and belief and the the right like like is there anything greater than like a metaphor be, be, yeah, or something because like because that's what the christians are connecting to so they so they want to see this bible story that they know up on screen and it doesn't actually have to connect to anything that's tr- truly like human right or that speaks to the human condition right or anything like that right because this doesn't right. this is i mean it's either but a the for somebody story to make it a character-based story right right well and the About other thing human is human drama and the other thing is it largely it's a story about everybody on the planet being killed. Yeah. How do you make that an okay story? There's Does, no redemption. The only re- the only redemption is that like one guy sees it coming because God right. tells him and and plans ahead. Isn't there some like who's boinking whom in this thing? Like I, who I, I don't Isn't know. there something like am I thinking of the wrong people? I'm thinking of Lot. I'm thinking about his his daughter's getting him drunk. That's oh, no. well, here's the thing. About... I thought there was some incest or something going on. No, no, I mean, the worst thing with, with Noah is that after the, the flood, after his boat lands, his son, Ham sees him naked. Mm. Well, he gets drunk. First of all, Noah gets drunk. So Noah apparently is not only a shipbuilder, but also a vintner. Well, you'd ha- because where did he find the booze? You know, he, the booze no, he had away? a vineyard. He oh, starts, he, he started a vineyard. He did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Bible? Uh Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah. After after the flood and everything, he starts a vineyard. Ah. He makes his own wine. Great. Lovely. You know, he's an accomplished man. Yeah. And then he gets so drunk that he passes out naked in his tent. Wow. And then his son Ham, and this is like one of those really fucked up stories. Okay. His son Ham walks in on him and goes, oh shit, dad, and walks out. Right. Just sees his dad naked. And tells his brothers, his brothers walk in backwards into the tent so they don't see their dad naked and cover him with a blanket. Oh, to hide his shame. To hide his shame. Yeah. And for doing all of this, Noah says to Ham, you are now cursed for life Mm. and all of your generations will serve, will be in servitude to your brother's generations. Oh my God. What a dick. What a dick move. It's like the dickest of all the dick moves. Wow. And I love the the person that's... That doesn't even make any sense to me. Because, like, these people were, like, living in tents and whatnot. Yeah. Right? Like, and why is nudity such a big deal? A father, a son can't see his dad naked. Maybe, I mean, I'm thinking Noah had a little tiny... (laughs) I'm thinking... That's why he had to build such a big boat. (laughs) Yeah. Like the guys that drive the Hummers around. Mm-hmm. He's compensating with uh-huh. that boat. Yeah. Everybody yeah. around him is like, they've all got like little fishing boats or whatever. And they're like, like oh, pfft. why is Noah building such a big boat? <laughs> what? We know what you're compensating for there, Noah. Oh, my gosh. No, I'm supposed to like <laughs> all the animals. God told me to. God told me oh. to. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, my gosh. Okay. so So what I was getting to is. For me, the story doesn't mean jack shit. It's a terrible, stupid story. Right. For Ken Ham, which, which by the way, isn't it interesting that someone who's obsessed with the oh, Noah story is named Ham? Yeah, no kidding. Anyway, uh, for, for Ken Ham, it's, uh, it's very, very important. <laughs> and he's up in arms about this film. Just up in arms. It's I'm not, sure he is. He wow. said it's not at all faithful to the biblical account in Genesis. Mm. And he outlined several several problems with it. He said it's a Hollywood con designed to try to lure unsuspecting Jews and Christians <gasps> to witness an unbiblical production. Oh, an unbiblical production. <laughs> he could say that about anything. What he doesn't though. realize is that, like, literally, if you just shoot only what's in the Bible, you've got a five-minute vi- movie. Right. You can't. Just shoot what's in the Bible. And as soon as you start shooting, as soon as you cast it with anybody, like <laughs> it, it's just, it stops work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But he what a nitwit. He objects to like apparently he thinks that they they haven't cast Noah's family as the right number of people. Oh my! Uh, really? 
Yeah, he says Noah's that, family only consists of his wife, terrible. three sons, and one daughter-in-law, contrary to the Bible. He oh. also says, it appears as if every species was crammed into the ark instead of just the kinds of animals, thus mocking the ark account the same way secularists do today. <laughs> Because his whole way of making any sense of it at all is that it's not all two of every animal. Right, right, right. It's two of every kind. And then you have, like, what? What does he call it? Like, microevolution? Like, he... Like, yeah, yeah. You have, like, this little bit of evolution that's happening. Evolution has happened since that point. Right. To the To the crazy extent that, like, there were two... It wasn't like there was every kind of dog. There were two dogs. Right. And... All of the dogs that we now have so they have were, happened since then. They were kicking off all these like poodles and shih tzus. <laughs> right, and... right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no Doberman Pinscher. You can't come on. Yeah, we got two. Our two are going to be Boston Terriers. We've got mm, two Boston Terriers. That's not, that's not the two I would and pick. Everything is coming. They're little. They're cute. You have to have small dogs on. The, they are there's adorable. Not room on the ark for every. Yeah, kind of but dog. I I was gonna go with the uh, wiener dogs. <laughs> no, they're arn. Dachshunds. They're ornery. They are yeah. ornery little yeah, bastards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're anyway, cute, though. Anyway, there you go. Put a little bow. There's nothing cuter than a than a dachshund with a bow in its hair. <laughs> you saw my mom's dogs. <laughs> yes, and you're. I did. <laughs> they're so sweet. Anyway, there you go. There's a. They're they're paramount hedging their bets. Well, I also heard something about um, part of like the Christian objection was that the uh that there were historical inaccuracies right yes it they did, that's did, right did they you, were they were talking about how it is the nrb the uh the national religious broadcasters thank you for pointing this out they they insisted on this dic- disclaimer because the film is quote historically inaccurate <laughs> <laughs> i think i think any film about noah is going to be historically inaccurate it's... We don't have a historical account of Noah, mm-hmm. nor did it ever happen. Right. That It's a I, problem. I, yeah. You know what? The story... Also, I will say this. <laughs> another another film about something that happened a long time ago, Star What's Wars, that? I think, is totally historically inaccurate. Oh, uh, yeah. I think that that's... I think, I think we need, honestly... We need to get a movement going and, and uh, <laughs> to, to get the, have a disclaimer put at the beginning of Star Wars. Right. Or or make him like reshoot it again, re-edit it again, do another so it's another accurate. special 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 edition hmm. that's uh hit the historically accurate version. Because mm-hmm. frankly, it's just not. C three PO is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that was in space. C C four PO. It was a real. It was a different number. Uh, anyway, what do you that's got? That's just ridiculous. Um, well, I have the story of a. Um, a, uh, how am I going to approach this? It's uh, the story of a, a, a convicted felon oh, um, slash doctor. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, in the state of Oklahoma. he So the guy was imprisoned for um, tax evasion, mail fraud, and health care fraud in Ohio. Yeah. Uh, after he served his time, uh, the state medical – well, okay. So initially, of course, when he went to, to jail – uh, the state medical board of Ohio revoked his medical license, ah. um, but then the Oklahoma medical board um, allowed him seven years later to practice medicine under state supervision. Oh yes, okay. because right. because what you can do in Oklahoma in in Ohio is not the same as what you can do in Oklahoma. Probably you can yeah you can get away with anything in Oklahoma. You can noodle. You can noodle. <laughs> Noodling, totally okay in Oklahoma. And if you don't know what it is, it's not dirty. It's yeah. just fishing. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, so, but he's uh, he's coming under fire uh, right now because he is going around and uh, giving, having people pay for this con- special concoction that he's come up with that he's calling the Jesus shot. And it is a... I beg your pardon? He's charging $300. <laughs> Wait. And he will not disclose what's in the shot, but it's an it injection. Will, it is a shot. It is an injection. Okay? <laughs> but it will cure you of – it takes away pain for life. Oh. You have no more pain because he has shot you with Jesus. Holy he's injected, shit. He's injected Jesus right into you. 
damn this guy's a total con man just like what amazing what i'm buying into it <laughs> you want to go I, get a, I'm a Jesus re- i've got 300 dollars lying around i will head down to okay oh wow cool and get me that shot uh, my favorite part of this whole story, though, uh-huh. uh, so this is, I, I found this on news9.com. Oh. Uh, so there's uh, Channel 9, I'm assuming, in Oklahoma City. Right. Um, and uh, so they reported on it. They uh, they contacted the Full Circle Health Clinic, uh, the the director there. Uh-huh. Um, that's where he's uh, he's been working as a part-time employee. Sure. Um, and they got in touch with Barbie Schrick, who's mm. the director. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, she says um she says this to the media i'm so glad you're telling me about this thank god for the news that investigates things out, that finds things out for people <laughs> the guy's working for her <laughs> in her clinic giving people shots of jesus oh and she's just like well thank you so much for calling you know can i just say now something now i know now <laughs> That is useful information. I I will take that back and I will take it under advisement. <laughs> I think I think that there is something like amazing about about being able I mean people if you can con someone into paying $300 for a shot that you won't tell them what's in it mm-hmm. but that you claim it's going to cure your pain is going for life. I, I <sighs> I don't know what to say about that. I wonder what he's putting in it. It's like it's like it's probably, Dr. Pepper. It's, <laughs> it's, it's probably just saline. But yeah. like, no, he's I mean, gonna, he, if he's a doctor, he, he hopefully he's not also truly crazy. Hopefully he's just a criminal, right? And not crazy. And well, so he's not like putting crazy whacked wackadoo shit in there, right? Hopefully it's just like something totally benign, right? And it's not going to do anything, right? I just think, you know, thank God that science has caught up to religion. And now, <laughs> for, for, for centuries, for millennia, we've been, we've been taking our Jesus, you know, through reading. Orally. Or, we've been taking it orally. <laughs> right. <laughs> through, through whatever. Or, what or, uh, or, orally. Oh. We've been taking it orally. And orally, depending yeah. on what your communion situation is. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, but, I wasn't uh, thinking about that part too. But uh, but now, thank God, we can have concentrated Jesus in shot form. <laughs> and I now, what he needs to do, body and blood of Christ. That's right. That's right. Now, what I would probably go for is uh, concentrated Jesus in shot glass form. Mm. Just, I like just yeah. pound a shot of Jesus. Probably get a little drunk. Pref- It'll take away some of your pain for sure. I prefer Jesus enema. <laughs> Just clean me out, Jesus. Clean me out, Jesus. Uh, I think I think we've hit on the title for this week's episode. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus, <laughs> clean me out. Yeah, I mean, if you want, like, you know, you, your 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 bowels, mm-hmm. it, you can do shots of alcohol. It's so it refreshing. It will kill you. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or potentially kill you. Oh yeah, like. Kids don't try this at home. Yeah, don't. Um, don't try anything that we're suggesting at home ever. <laughs> Taking shots of Jesus. Um, but no, you can get drunk. You know, through your yeah. And uh, so, sure. Why not get your Jesus that way? That's sure. all. That's what I was saying. Get your Jesus on. Yeah. Through your butthole. <laughs> okay. Well, that segues nicely to another to one of your stories, Dan. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess I will do that story now that you forced me. Or are uh, you saving? You can save it. Yeah, I was saving that one. Okay, I'm gonna. That, that, that's a good closer. Yeah, I'm gonna go. It I'm, was just a beautiful segue. Well, I'll I'll use a less beautiful segue, but we'll still. We'll, there's still this segue, which is that if your if Jesus invades your butthole at Bob Jones University, uh, don't oh. report it. Oh, You're, okay. Or rather, that's what they've been telling people for a long time there. It's a problem. Uh, Bob Jones University, as you may or may not know, is a, is a the word university should probably be in quotations <laughs> when we talk about Bob Jones. Um, it's a fundamentalist Christian uh, college in, I think, Greenville, South Carolina. Mm. Um, Bob Jones was, a, was an, a, an evangelical preacher mm-hmm. of some renown. Mm-hmm. And I guess he's dead now, I think. Anywho, mm. he, uh, this, this university... Um, like all major institutions that see a lot of young people flowing through, 
has had its problems with uh, its run-ins with, you know, abuse or, or, or molestation or rape or whatever. Um, but every time a student for decades has gone to seek counseling for sexual abuse um, or has gone to report it, mm-hmm. has been uh, counseled that reporting it uh, would fundamentally damage uh, Jesus. It would hurt <laughs> Jesus. No, they didn't go straight to Jesus. It would. It would. They said that. Uh, they, well, what they said, what what they were basically told was that that it would make the the institution look bad. The cause and, of Jesus, and that makes that makes Jesus look bad. Jesus cries when Bob Jones University looks bad. Jesus Is that what weeps. Saying? Matter of fact, uh, every time uh, a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. But every time someone is is a diploma a, is abused oh jesus weeps <laughs> i was gonna say every time someone gets a diploma at bob jones university an angel an angel dies dies <laughs> i don't think that that's i i don't think that's on their official marketing <laughs> maybe anyway so uh so so as this was a problem uh bob jones decided to do the the right thing and commission a study um, along with some other some other organizations to see like how they how they're actually dealing with this, how rampant the problem is, okay. and 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 maybe address it. Yeah. Oh, good. <clears throat> that seems like a good thing to do. Maybe not something that needs a study. Well, there you go. Maybe you should just. Well, maybe 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 you've been deal with the situation. <laughs> well, but they they don't know how. They clearly are bad at it. <laughs> so they commissioned a study, uh, which they then... There's nothing in the Bible about this. Then a, ye- a year into the study, they decided to decommission the study. Be- why? Because they were finding... What it, did they find? I think because it was going to show that, they, that there was a lot of problems on that campus, and they didn't Ooh. want that to come out in the study. No, that is just your speculation. <laughs> uh, let's see. Or is that someone else's speculation? Well, um, it's the speculation of the New York Times. So, uh, okay. the president uh, of the university and great grandson of its founder, Stephen Jones, mm-hmm. said, uh, "We grew concerned that in the process, uh, grace, which is the uh, the godly response to abuse in Christian environment, uh, grace had apparently, um, uh, sorry, they he said we we grew concerned. They're the ones that are conducting the study." And he said, we grew concerned that in the process, Grace had begun going beyond the originally outlined intentions. Uh, Oh. But he would not elaborate on that. So so he said, we terminated our agreement with Grace (laughs) so that we could sit down and get it back on track. So it went outside of its parameters, meaning it started looking at, like, (laughs) higher-ups. Yeah. I I, I mean, It started actually finding, like... I mean, maybe the parameters that, that... Bob Jones University thought they were setting was don't nothing that makes us look bad, but let's see what we can do. <laughs> this all makes us look bad. Yeah, there. Uh, so critics are saying that they that they're worried about protecting the church and the university and not the victims. Mm. Which really, oh, that's a surprise. That, yeah, that that makes one say, duh. <laughs> anyway, they're uh, they're not they're. I mean, it, it's it is shocking because we've never ever heard any stories of Christians sweeping abuse under the rug. That's never happened before. I, I don't recall any. So, yeah, yeah there's a big shocker. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, well, I have a story that comes to us from the UK, the UK. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, this is the story of a uh, Jehovah's Witness couple Ooh. who had a baby. Who needed uh, heart surgery. Okay. And you know the whole Jehovah's Witness thing about blood transfusions, right? They, they love them. They love them. I mean, anytime <laughs> you can get a blood transfusion. Just go and get one yeah. for fun. Uh, no, actually the exact opposite. The Jehovah's Witnesses have been, uh, well, dead set against receiving blood transfusions. I, I think it has something to do with like receiving the sins of the yeah, or, other person or something really weird. I, I can't think, remember what I it is. I think you anyways, absorb their soul. Yeah, it's like. Something really bad yeah. like that happens, right? Yeah. It's carried by the blood. What if and you got so, the blood of like some like super awesome non sinful person? I know. Can you get a blood transfusion from someone better than you, and then you win? That seems like a good. Can thing. you diffuse? Can you can you get, can you transfuse your sins out? Yeah, 
<laughs> and then someone else's clean soul in. That seems like something. Yeah. It seems like a good thing to do. Yeah. Like children's blood. They Baby just... blood. <laughs> Baby blood transfusions. Oh, I'm selling it. It's my new, I'm marketing it just to J-dubs. <laughs> That's horrid. That's absolutely horrid. Uh, anyways, uh, so it's a, it, it's a complex, um, I guess it's not that complex of a surgery but the the child was going to have to be hooked up to a um you know the heart lung machine i guess yeah so you need a certain like even if you don't need a transfusion you need i guess you need like a certain amount of blood to like prime the whole system like you can't just like start it because you would, <laughs> you would drain all the blood from the baby oh okay. i don't know if you have to prime it for adults you probably do <laughs> Um, but nonetheless so uh the parents object to uh, the whole thing mm-hmm and uh, a high court judge in the UK yeah. has given permission for the baby to undergo blood transfusions against the parents' religious objections. No! They could save that baby's life if they do that. <laughs> what are they trying and to do? Basically, the, the baby is... Ge- it's a it's a near guarantee that the baby would die with the with the, it has no long term prospect of survival without the surgery. Uh, that's just wow. but with the surgery it stands a really good chance. And so, right. um, but I just have to like I sit back and I'm just like, holy crap! Finally, yeah, somewhere there's somebody, <laughs> you know, who's who's values the life of a child yeah. over religion. Yeah. You... It only makes sense. This child has no right to decide for themselves. Yeah. No ability. I mean, it's a baby. It can't even, like, fake side with the parents. You know what I mean? It can't mm. even be like, I know my parents are right and letting me die. It can't even do that. No. Yeah. The, yeah. The... Like, it makes, n- it makes absolute sense to do this. I applaud the judge, and that's pretty much my story. I just wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll <laughs> leave it at that, then. <laughs> well done, Uck Judge. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm moving from the UK, bastion of of sense in this case. No. To Jesus. Kenya, bastion of holy sweet Jesus, what the fuck's going on in Kenya? Yeah. Um now I'm going to say that uh this is this comes to us from the Kenyan Daily Post, uh which is a publication that I know nothing about. Uh mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I don't know how much to trust it, but everybody else reported this and they trusted it so so there you go okay uh this is about a a pastor um from a church in dandora phase two i don't know what that is but that's a place apparently uh his church is called the (laughs) i really love this the lord's propeller redemption church propeller the lord's propeller redemption church Okay. Which makes me think of Jesus with one of those little beanies little on, beanie, yeah. with, on top with the little propeller. Lord's propeller. I maybe don't even know. What the, maybe the Lord is propelling you toward goodness mm. or something. Anywho, yeah, okay. Reverend Njohi uh, of this of this church uh, has has a new mandate for his female parishioners. Oh, what's that? He wants them to allow Jesus to enter them. By not wearing bras and panties. <laughs> no. There's nothing that keeps you further from God than undergarments. So he's like the anti-Mormon. Yes, yes. <laughs> Mormons want you to load up on the undergarments to the point where you are covered elbows to knees. Yes. Uh, this guy this guy just thinks uh, it's just so wrong. It's so wow. wrong. Not so, only okay, so uh, but what where is he getting this information that that's how Jesus wants to like that that's the hole through which uh Jesus enters one's body well because there i are mean other it's not holes. It's, it's not just holes like, it's not just about holes because okay. no bras there's no holes really present no, you're right you're from, right I was just there. focusing on on on, on, on the, 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 the lower the lower nether regions. regions, but that was the one that kind of. I yeah I yeah, think okay. I you're think right bras. He, what does that do? Uh, I think it's just these are layers that prevent him from seeing their body. I mean, prevent Jesus from entering their bodies. I really think. I mean, I really think I he just has a hot. It. He has at least one hot parishioner who likes to sit in the front row in a short skirt, and he <laughs> he's 
He's done with seeing her and, her and, underwear. And she's she's and she's, she's a buxom woman. Yes. He's gone so far as to as to tell uh, his parishioners that the mothers need to make sure that their daughters are obeying this edict as well. Dear God. That's re- well, you know what? Here's the deal. <laughs> it's definitely coming f- straight from a pervert. Right. But isn't it refreshing? <laughs> It, in that, that he's, he's so not direct. Like, well, no, that not, the, not that his perversion's so direct, but the, instead of like making people cover up more, right? He's encouraging instead of like veils and hijabs and burkas and whatever have sure. you. Is, he's saying less. Free yourself. Less is more in this case. Now, gentlemen, you cover the fuck up. Yeah. I don't want to see any of that yeah, shit. Yeah, I, don't, I don't need any of that in my head while I'm thinking about her. Or <laughs> He's in the wrong church. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, we, we reported on nudist church. Yeah. No, he just needs right. to go to nudist church. You're right. That's, that's, but maybe it's, it's baby steps. Instead, he, no, it's perv He's working church. his way. He has created perv <laughs> church. We, we, yeah. I'm, that's, it's, he's, here, and here, here's another weird thing. So I saw this on several different uh-huh. people's you know people reporting and they right. all they all referred back to this Kenyan Daily Post okay uh which apparently can't write the words panties and bras because every time you see them they've got like the little at symbol for the a in bras what? and and like in the and panties is spelled p at symbol n t exclamation point like british pound s like it's bizarre <sighs> How can this be? I, I mean, I don't know the rules in Kenya, but apparently you can't say panties and bras. But you can like clearly reference panties and bras with little symbols. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it either. It I, makes I, it I'm, makes the I'm, whole thing. I'm suspect. even more confused at this point. I'm good. Yes. Anyway, panties. I, panties. A you know, word? frankly, I I I think this guy's a perv, but I'm all for women not wearing panties and bras. <laughs> but just not just just you can't mandate that at your church by by a religious leader by a religious perv religious perv yeah. perv, perv leader perv yeah. yeah well all right anyway well I uh, the Church of Dan does not command you not to wear panties and bras it's just fine if you don't it's just and you, and and possibly even encourage suggestion. just whatever yeah, 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 yeah. whatever but it, i mean if you feel nice without it go ahead yeah that's all i'm saying very, very liberating <laughs> yeah oh yeah Amazing, feel man. that breeze up there <laughs> i don't know dan <laughs> all okay. right what's your next one um well i have st- so um as i'm sure everybody has been following in the news um the there have been a lot of cases that have been going before federal courts from the state level mm. right? uh states suing in federal court um or people suing states in federal court over the gay marriage issue damn queers um, these are typically in places that have well they are in places that have laws against gay marriage whether it's uh right because it'd be of... silly to do it if there if there were no laws against gay marriage. <laughs> I don't think they would go get anywhere with it. <laughs> they're well, in they're... Iowa suing, right? Damn so you. they're they're suing states for the right to marry to 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 gayly marry. Yes, <laughs> um, and uh, so Michigan is is wrapping up its uh, its court case right now. Okay, the hearing is is ending. I think it ended today. Actually, oh, okay. But so like closing. Closing arguments were today. Sure. Yesterday they had the last, um, the the, the state's final witness mm. was 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 up testifying. Good. And uh, he's a um, he's a I, I don't fully get exactly who he is or why he was up there, but he's a Canadian economist. <laughs> well, um, that's a really good start. <laughs> because if you need someone to weigh in on marriage equality. What you need is an economist. Is an economist. Yeah, clearly. Preferably clearly. one from a different country. But um yes. And uh but but here here's here's the funny thing, Dan. Before Yo. when when I mentioned that I was just gonna kinda talk about this um before the show, I mentioned how um how sort of baffled I am that the argument that uh, from the, the, the pro traditional marriage 
folks and yeah. a traditional marriage folks um is uh is they're really basing it in in this whole kids argument well what about the kids yes you know, the argument is all about the um uh, well-being of children can't somebody and save these children this, this like doubt that the children have like that they're in good settings when they're in a, this is like a gay marriage yeah yeah, yeah. the parents are ma- gay couples that are married sure and you said what did you say what was your thing? Well, just just that they they don't have any real arguments, and that the only argument that they can actually make is the they, the argument that they want to make in their hearts is look Jesus, mm-hmm. but they can't make that argument because it's not a legal argument. So all they're hoping for is that the judge will implicitly hear, but Jesus, and will will rule in their favor. Well, here is a case of. Someone who actually said it in court. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> Yay! He said, when when uh, when pressed by by the opposing lawyer, um, he said that unrepentant gays are going to hell. <laughs> yes. See what you're Which doing. Is amazing. From a Mormon perspective, what that ends up meaning is what you're doing is not just denying these kids. A stable household with a mom and a dad. Right. You're denying them eternity with their parents. Oh, it's just awful. Eternity. It's awful. Oh. But don't now, worry. The, now this the Lord Canadian... will figure it out in the millennium. <laughs> oh, the Lord. <laughs> the Lord is is really the only argument that they have to make because all of the data says uh, there's you can't just deny these people something that they're you know. Right. There's no there's no harm to the kids. There's right. no harm to the people. It's yeah. all fine. Yeah. In fact, um the the Utah case that's being about to be argued. Right. This, the, this one's going this, this one's going, going up to, the, to a higher court now. To the Circuit Court of Appeals. Exactly. Um the case that the um that the, again they're making the, 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 the conservatives are making the case about the kids and the uh the, the pro gay marriage folks um Oh, I'm sorry. I, and, I, the and state. I, right. The state's defense right. is based in, in these kids, and they're using these these studies um, and, and citing all these different studies to show, well, but kids don't fare as well in same-sex households right. as they do when their parents are heterosexual and married. Right. And the, uh, the, the, the authors of those studies have filed an amicus brief. <laughs> brief. On the side of the state, <laughs> uh, no, on the side of not on the side on the side of the. I'm, I'm sorry, the the uh, the plaintiffs, the plaintiffs, saying, um, yeah, they uh, they've misinterpreted it. That's not what we were saying <laughs> at all. Those not, are not our findings. That is not what we were saying. And we 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 would we we would prefer it if uh, if, if our studies weren't used right. for something. That if the court would view our saying. studies as what they actually are, right? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good stuff. Uh, this case is going to be big. It's uh, you know, oh my it's, God, it's, I know, it's very much expected to go all the way mm-hmm. and cannot be ignored the way they the way they shuffled off the California case. So. Yeah, well, it's because it's all the lower courts are all starting to chime in on right. it. Right, or states are saying we're not going to defend our our law. Yeah, you exactly. Know? And so it's it's huge. It's, it's huge, huge, huge. Yep, it's so. a big deal, mind you. There are some grumpy people on that on that Supreme Court. That that Kennedy guy, the, or not the Kennedy not guy, Kennedy. the Scalia fella. Scalia, he mm-hmm. he thinks it's a bunch of argle bargle, for sure. <laughs> he's rawr, rawr. he's yeah. a grumpy grumpy man. Yeah, that he is. All right. Well, if you guys want to get in touch with us and tell us how you feel about all this argle bargle, you can do it. Uh, they, one of the quickest ways is to send us a message on the old uh, emails. Yeah. The, Fire that up at uh, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can leave us a voicemail at 424-666-8442. Or go and see what Mackenzie's thrown up on the old Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. And like us. And if you're worried about liking us and everybody seeing it, change your settings like Mackenzie said. Yeah. So like us. Like us. Like the shit Liking out of us. Liking us is important, people. That's right. Man. And if you can't do that, then at least go onto iTunes and like give us a good give review. Us a good, give us a review. Yeah. Le- it's the least you can do. Yeah. Actually, the least you can do is nothing. Yeah. Technically. Yeah. So, so you could do the that. The least would be to just to stop listening. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not advocating that at all. Don't do the least. <laughs> do like next to the least. <laughs> anyway. All right. 
Well, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, and during our break, we're going to listen to, uh, was it Stan Solomon? Was that his name? Something. Something like that. Sounds right. He uh, he has a show called Talk to Solomon Show. <laughs> Um, and Sounds I guess amazing. that's part of CPN. I don't know what that is. Anyways, he's of course a conservative, religiousy, talk showy, hosty, and uh, so he's going to be talking. He has a little sidekick, a little grumpy sidekick in a blue sweater, um, <laughs> who's next to him. He'll chime in a little bit, but uh, the voice that you hear at the end, if you know the name, uh, is Phyllis Schlafly, and you'll uh, you'll appreciate the insights that these guys have oh, to offer. Incredible insights. I don't really give a damn if there are any Muslims here. But if they are here, if they don't want to be Americans, then get the hell out. And the same for any other group. And it's not a color. It's, a, it's what America is about. And uh, Barack Obama's not America, never has been, not in his actions, not in his speech, not in his politics, and frankly, not in his birth, in my humble opinion. Not in his baseball throw either. Yeah, he's, he's a homosexual, always has been, is now, always will be. And uh, that's his right to be, but this nonsense that somehow uh, homosexuality is is equal to and is or preferable to is just wrong. Well, very well stated, Stan. Thank thank you for being a voice of truth and sanity on the air. <laughs> truth and sanity. Thank God for that sanity there. <laughs> that was a. Uh... Oh, that Barack Obama. And his baseball throw. Is that what the guy says? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we know he's gay. <laughs> throws like a girl. Uh, so throws like yeah. a damn queer is what he does. Yeah. Barack. Well, I'll tell you, you one know, thing. In, in... He is a lefty, which makes it look weird. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't huh. want that. Yeah. I've, you know, <laughs> like, you could tell with me. I guarantee you. <laughs> With my baseball, with my throw, <laughs> you're not throwing any I, any first pitches out without everybody I, going. Oh, that's so oh cool. boy. That well, we're glad he came out years ago because <laughs> he would have right now right. if he hadn't. <laughs> it I is saw, not a pretty throw. I saw an amazing video once of like sort of macho guys throwing with their non-dominant hand. Oh yeah. It's amazing. They all suddenly look as gay as a May Day. <laughs> Maybe I should try with my non-dominant hand. Just say, yeah, just just be like, all I do is throw with my... I'm trying to train up my non-dominant hand. Don't judge me. Because everybody looks <laughs> oh, my God. really bad. If I threw... Okay, because I'm right-handed. Uh -huh. If I threw with my left hand, <laughs> I don't even know what would happen. <laughs> it would go backwards. Uh, no, but it wouldn't go anywhere near where I wanted it. <laughs> It would it would just bounce and roll. You've just, just bounce bounce probably like four or five feet away from me and just roll for a few feet. Oh, that's all that would happen. Your poor disappointed dad, oh, especially my poor disappointed dad. Oh, but, did did he want you to be a sportsman? Oh, yeah. He was like <laughs> he was such a baseball player. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh my god, oh. baseball and basketball. He was just big into both of them he'd just take you out in the backyard and wince every time you threw the ball oh, back he, to him. he he just he knew just he gave up at some point i was fairly young when he was just like this is never gonna happen <laughs> that's pretty funny all right well uh we've got some uh some emails from folks and stuff uh let me just pull that up okay um uh dan wrote to us hey that's a good name i'll bet he's handsome anyway he uh he wrote to us and said He's he's he said a bunch of nice things. Um, he's a, a veteran. Uh, thank you for your service, Dan. And he says that the VA. He wanted to say that the VA has a program that provides headstones and markers for all veterans oh, yeah. uh, discharged okay. under under honorable status. Okay. Uh, so he's a uh, he's uh, assembling a packet for his spouse to deal with uh, the tombstone issue and uh, military uh, cemetery choice. Hmm. And uh, he said that the markers can reflect your religious persuasion or not. Yeah, mine will be atheist. What's the what's the symbol? Does it say? Yeah, he's so he included a whole list of emblems um, that that are, are a whole sort of pre-approved pre-approved emblems, and there's some that are pretty surprising. Hmm. But yeah, there's a there's one that's atheist. There's a humanist one that no you can way. choose. What does the atheist one look like? Uh, kind of like the American atheist mm, uh, logo. I object to that. Yeah, I don't love it. I don't love it. But there's a whole bunch of things. There's a Sufism. No way. Sufism reoriented. 
Oh, it does look like the damn. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. It looks just like that. But, I mean, you know. Well, it's good enough, though. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I mean, what are you going to choose? Actually, uh, it, that's a good symbol. Sure. It's got a little A in the middle, and which I would probably just leave the A out, personally. But it's got the, uh, it's got the, it's, the, mo- it's sort of the, the atom thing. The atom. Yeah. It's got the, the atom symbol. The orbits of the mm-hmm. different electrons sort of thing. Yeah. There's also Wicca. You can oh, get the I see Wicca one. one. You, can, you yeah. can get a sick one that looks like an alien. Can you have a Satanist one? I don't, I don't think Satanist shows up. Mm. Um, interestingly, uh, Emblem 98 Muslim mm. uh, is not shown due to copyright. I thought that was fascinating. <laughs> Shut up. You can, get, you can get the hammer of Thor, people. <laughs> the fucking hammer of Thor. <laughs> I think that's amazing. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Am I looking at the same thing you're looking at? Uh, looks similar. similar. Yeah, it looks the same. What's is that a paintbrush? Where is it? Where? The one way at the bottom on the right. Uh, no, it's a sandhill crane. Oh, okay. We are looking at very different ones. Oh, the, okay. the paintbrush, when I blew it up a little bit, looks like it's actually a crown. Oh, oh, okay. With a with a with the stick sticking but, out. Of it. But you can get a sandhill crane. I don't know what that is. Boy, boy, I was there saying I I am apparently not as up on my religions as I thought I was. These symbols are impressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got a lot of stuff you can infinity. Yeah. Just infinity. Okay. That's cool. Sure. Why not? I I approve of infinity. Okay. Um here's the dill. Yeah. And I said dill like that. I'm like a, like a Utah. Here's the dill. Um The atheist one is not bad. Uh-huh. But I think we need a better one. Yeah. yeah I don't know do. what it is. Actually, what I would like is for there to be an era when just people just don't put one there. Yeah. You don't need Period. an emblem. But it's kind of nice to have... To make an eternal I mean, statement. Yeah. For our friend Dan, I think it's great that he's uh, that he's interested in making sure that everyone knows, hey, yeah. don't pray for me. Yeah. Or if you do, I'm not going to hear it because I'm going to be dead. Just uh, how about a... Uh, Middle finger. Just yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Grumpy even in his death. Bottle of booze. I want a bottle of booze on my. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's do. my church. Yeah, drunky. <laughs> would it be wine? What would it be? Uh, well, if it was wine, it would just be a box. A <laughs> box with a little spigot <laughs> on it. <laughs> box so, with a I'm box classy, with a, a box know. with a stem glass underneath it. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And as long, especially if it could come with the sound of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you should actually have a box of wine in, in, in your gravestone that people can actually just take some wine out of. Well, that would be lovely. Yeah, that could be your legacy. You should look into that. Or a beer tap. Or a, be- a beer there tap you go. would totally work. That would be. And then you just have have it in your will that someone has to refill the keg every so often. Or you know what? I'd be fine with it just being a fountain, right? That people could just like pour the pull it and some water comes out. Sure. Just to have like. Sure. So it's alive so it's a beer it's but a it, beer tap it but it's it a does little water. difficult to yeah to yeah. to have water or to have beer I'll tell you what if you had real beer and... you would have one of the most visited graves of all time yeah you know yeah. screw uh screw what's his name from the doors at Père Lachaise mm. you, everybody be pilgrimaging to the beer grave <laughs> Frank Feldman the, the eternal tap the eternal tap <laughs> I like it mm. Uh, Chris wrote in, hey guys, I was listening to last week's podcast and I was surprised when I heard you. Now, this isn't actually last week's. This is two weeks ago. Oh, okay. your, your Your show with Adam. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, because you guys didn't read any last week. Right. Uh, I was surprised uh, when I heard you talk about Jerry Anderson from Price and his belief that the Earth could benefit from an increase of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Then you mentioned that you pity his former students. Well... I am a former student, unfortunately. Oh, no way. This guy was our science and math teacher in eighth grade and at a Catholic school. He was literally hired the day before school started from his former job as a janitor at Walmart. What? (laughs) Did he have a teaching degree? He didn't know anything. No, it's a private school. They can do whatever they want. He didn't know anything when asked questions, uh, as he would have uh, as he would have to refer to the book to answer. And now he's and using we that all as made like, a game of this. And now he's using it as like a thing. Oh, I'm a former uh, science teacher, yeah. so I know about science. Yeah. 
Yeah. That would be like, holy shit. Yeah. He says, she says that we would use this as a game. Uh, we we oh would a- ask all sorts of questions only to hear him try his best to pull an answer out of his ass. He would tell us stories and claimed to invent things that even made eighth graders call bullshit. Oh, my Now, God. I think there's an element of that story that you guys missed. When I was listening to you mm-hmm. in foreign lands, mm-hmm. I listened to the show and you guys were talking about this. Now, this was a story of this guy. He's a he's now a state legislator uh-huh. from yeah. Price, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he he wants to to make it easy. He wants to to weaken strictures against pollution, right? By saying if it's on the periodic table of elements, if it's already in the atmosphere, it can't be a pollutant. Then, yeah, if it yeah right if it occurs in nature, it's not a pollutant, right? So here's the dealio, kind though, of yo, yeah. is that what you guys missed is the fact that he is from Price. He represents Price, Utah, mm-hmm. whose almost entire industry is coal. Oh, yeah, that's that's a good point. So I think I think that is uh, a useful thing to keep in mind when one sure. hears what he has to say on the subject of pollution. I just felt that he, uh, yeah, it was enough that. He didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. Right. Yes. And but clearly, you're right. You're right. It does add another another element to it to know right. that, what the local industry is. Right. So thanks, Chris, for writing in about that. Um, we had Greg write in. He said, hello, Frank and Dan. My name is Greg, and I live in Rhode Island. Uh, I've been a fan and supporter of TGIA since its inception, uh, and uh, he has, uh, he enjoys it tremendously and has encouraged others to listen. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. You can you guys can all just tell each other, tell tell your friends Why not? to listen to us. Yeah. And it would make us happy. Yeah. Don't you want to make us happy? It's what everybody's doing. It's the cool thing. Anyway, uh he says I'm writing because I re- I recently started a site for deconversion stories. Oh. Uh how we move from yeah. faith to reason. I just began cool. the site a few weeks ago but have re- received encouraging feedback and a handful of stories thus far. Uh, if you feel that there is any merit to putting a link on your site or mentioning it on the podcast, I would be delighted. Well, guess what, Greg? We're mentioning it. Uh, every If you guys want to share your story with Greg's site and uh, and uh, help him out in his quest to gather mm-hmm. good good deconversion stories, stories of, of you, you know, coming into the light mm. from, from the darkness of religion. Uh, then you can go to www.fallingfromoz, O-Z, as in, you know, that place where Dorothy went, mm-hmm. dot com. That was the, that was the religious place, was Oz? <laughs> well, apparently, apparently so. I don't know. They I have would, a wizard. I would think Kansas. Is the religious place? Mm, pretty I, sure. I, I think Dorothy went from one religion to another. Oh. I don't know. It was magic, I guess. It was magic, it sure. Was anyway, fallingfromoz.com. Everyone go and uh, share your stories with Greg. Hmm. He would appreciate it. Hmm. So, And we like to share that sort of thing. Hmm. And it looks nice. It's a nice looking site. So oh, good, good job on that, Greg. Yeah, we approve when things are designed well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we had a voicemail, didn't we? We do. And this is uh, it's a, it's a question uh, that will... Actually, she says it so well, I don't even need to introduce it. Hi, Frank and Dan. This is Lisa in Nevada, and I have a Mormon question for you. Um, We've got a pretty large Mormon community in northern Nevada, and I notice a lot of them wear a ring that has letters on it, and I don't recall from any previous episodes you guys talking about the ring. So I'm wondering if you could explain that for us. Thanks. Have a great day. Wonderful question. First of all, northern Nevada. Northern Nevada. It's almost nothing it's in what, like, northern Nevada. That's what, like Elko? Winnemucca? Reno. Reno is Reno's in northern. There. Yeah, sure. Okay. Sparks. <laughs> Winnemucca. That's Gerlock. Good, yeah. Are you mm-hmm. in Gerlock, Nevada? Ooh. Where's Gerlock? I don't even know. Gerl- Gerlock Gerlock's is. the closest town to Burning Man, to where Burning oh, Man is. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Okay. Anyway, uh, so. CTR. Yes. Are the letters that you will see on a Mormon's ring? Mm-hmm. If you see a Mormon wear, if you see someone wearing a ring that says CTR, you can bet that they are uh, of the LDS Church. Mm-hmm. And uh, what does that stand for, Frank? It stands for choose the right. You'll also see it uh, in some other letters, and oh. sometimes, yeah, because if you have a missionary mm-hmm. who went to uh, say like Italy. 
Right. You'll have w- w- where choose the right is translated to scegli il giusto. Yes, exactly. Um, you'll you'll have a little S I G. Yeah. On it. So. so so choose the right. Uh, it's it's it starts when you're a kid. There's there's a thing when you're a child, mm-hmm. like eight. Ish. When you're eight years old. So okay. So uh, the Sunday school for kids is called primary. Mm. And uh, when you're a little tiny kid, you start off when you're like three years old. That's when you get to start going to Mormon Sunday school. Right. And uh, three. That's three. Not, I thought that's it was five. No, because three is. Oh, might be five. I think it's five. Is it really five? I have really early memories of being a sunbeam. In, in fact, hmm. no. I'm fairly sure it's like either three or four because I remember being a sunbeam when I was just a little tiny guy. The nursery is for little kids. Yeah. And so, like, um, you have your sunbeams, your stars, um, your valiants, right? Wow, you're remembering and this then, really so, well. So you have valiant A, valiant B, and then you have CTRA and CTRB. So each one of those is a year, right? So you have valiant A, you're like five years old and then like valiant b you're six years old Mm -hmm. i think and 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 when you enter it and then you turn so everybody that's born in a specific year is in a class together right so anyway so and then after the ctrs you have what like it's not the my maids after that what what comes after or maybe maybe that's when the value oh no okay so i gotta have i gotta pull up here so three-year-olds you're right three-year-olds are sunbeams four-year-olds are ctr4 Oh, they've changed it. Yeah, now. Okay. In the past, they were called stars. Okay. Uh, and then there's CTR5 as a five-year-old. They were also called stars at some point. And then okay. rainbows. Rainbows? At some point, they were called rainbows. The six-year-olds know. were. Okay. Seven-year-olds have gone through all sorts of different things, but uh, including pilots, co-pilots, top wow. pilots, Zion's boys, Zion's girls. Wow. Okay. Yeah, weird. Huh. Anyway, uh, finally, you get to uh, seven-year-olds, you, you become a, a, a CTR. So anyway, so what we're getting at here is when you're when you're when you when you become a CTR in in primary, they give you a really cheapy, like Sh- shitty 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 ring. Turn your finger and green. Like, and, and in fact, the crest, the little shield on it, uh-huh. because it's it's in the shape of a shield, and there's a CTR in, inside the shield, um, is green. Yeah, or at least it used to be. Because let's face it, it's sort of out of touch. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but anyway, so they get the little thing. And it's a one size fits all, and so you squeeze it down so it fits your finger, right? And uh, and you wear it so proudly. Oh, and you wear it everywhere. And then if you're really, really, really lucky, your parents will buy you an actual like CTR ring. No. But then, like, what's creepy is that it's it's stopped being just this little kid thing, and now like adults will wear CTR rings. Yeah. Yeah, that started kind of like when when we were coming up into high school, like Mm -hmm. the high school kids started wearing it, like like a throwback. It was like this sort of like like (laughs) hip throwback to when you were a kid. But now everybody's so hip. Well, thank God that they have the jewelry to remind them not to not to choose the wrong. Right. Right. Well, there you go. So that that's what it's about. It's just a dumb cultural thing. Yep. Has, it's not really re- religious. No, kind of like, it's, it's not, not a sacred ring or anything. Yeah, it's just it doesn't have any powers. Oh, I wish it did. It should. It should turn them into goats. <laughs> <or something. laughs> Shape like, of yeah. a, a temple. Yeah. Form of a baptismal font. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyway, there you go. Uh, if so, thank you guys for uh, all of your input. Hmm. Should we should we talk a little bit about the far off land of India? Well, you're gonna have to do most of the talking, Dan. Well, you can you can have questions for All me right. All right. because I am now an expert. If that's what I get, <laughs> that's what you if get. That's all I get is you can, questions. You can pipe in sometimes. I'll ooh and ah <laughs> and hmm. <laughs> okay, those are those are your options. Uh-huh. Okay, ooh ah and hmm. So anyway, so yeah, I sorry I was I, I'm sorry if any of you felt abandoned by me, hmm. but off I went with my mother, just me and my mom, into India. Yeah, I mean, it was that's that's a like 
so okay so so you, you didn't you don't just go to india like this is this is the thing right like right well you're not just gonna show up to india yeah it's an interesting it's, thing uh, like because i have to say like it's one of those places that I have a certain amount of curiosity about. Right. And there are things there that I would like to see. Sure. But I but it's never been like like there's there's it's never been like one of the major like places that it actually like I feel is feasible in mm. a way, right? Because it's just like it seems like there's just so much to overcome just to get there and like once <laughs> you're there like to deal with and like it seems hard. It's, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's hard. Yeah. Going to India is hard. Yeah. If, starting, by the way, with just getting the damn <laughs> visa, which was a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> I don't know whose brother-in-law runs the the company that, that they farm all of this workout mm-hmm. to, that the consulate farms this workout to, but they are a nightmare. They are wow. ridiculous. It's like they don't want anybody to come. Which, they they do have enough people. They have enough people, but not enough <laughs> money. Have... They really do need our time. Please, our... please don't send us any more people. Right, exactly. But as long as they don't stay, it should be fine. Right. Well, but, that's the point of the visa. Right. So anyway, uh, but but this has been a, a lifelong dream for my mom. Or if not lifelong, many, 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 many decades long dream right. for my mom. But she didn't ever get to go until now. Okay. So, uh, so you know, we're kicking the thing off the old bucket list. Okay, for for my mom, she's yeah. she's uh, she's in her late seventies, which I think is remarkable that she was willing. Like I've known people in their late seventies, and they're typically like, mm, like they're not. A lot of them are not even willing to like go across town. They usually stop. You know, they just stop. Like a long car ride starts to become an ordeal, right? And so, like. The idea of like getting on multiple flights, yeah, and like being—it's travel is not a comfortable thing, right? Right. Not typically. No, it's not. And you know, we're not flying first class here. We're right. fl- we're 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 in the the economy section. How long was the flight from what San Francisco? Where did you fly through? Well, okay, so I flew. I flew. Uh, it would be Salt Lake. It was supposed to be. Salt Lake to Chicago, Chicago to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to uh to Chennai. India. Dear God. Yeah. But Not one of those is a is a is a short flight. Well, one of them turned out to be because oh. the flight to Chicago, there was a mechanical problem on the plane and they we they downed us in Denver. Oh, okay. And then I had to take a, a nonstop from Denver to Frankfurt, but didn't make it there in time. Got there about an hour after my mom left Frankfurt. Oh, you're kidding. For Chennai. So I, so she, her first day in India was by her damn self. Were you, I mean, so you were able to communicate with her and let her know that you were going to be late. I was. I, I actually okay. caught her before she left uh, and told, when I was in Denver, caught her before she left for Frankfurt because we were going to meet in Frankfurt. And then right. Up. Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, it turned out fine. She was fine. She had a good time that first day. Uh, you know, we had a good travel agency set up. <laughs> Basically, here's how this setup worked for us. Everywhere we landed, there was a representative from the travel agency. Uh-huh. This is a this is an interior. This is a, a, a an Indian travel agency. Okay. Everywhere there was a representative who got us to our car, and we had a driver. And then the driver would get us to our hotel, and we would sign in and blah, blah, blah. And if we were going to go out and see anything that day, then we had the driver and not the representative, but our tour guide. So we had a guide. We had people left and right just sort of at our service, Mm. which is, you know, something that... A little entourage. We really... There were more people (laughs) helping us than there were us. (laughs) That's bizarre. Which is weird, uh-huh. not and not entirely always comfortable because you're sometimes sometimes you're just like I, I there's a lot of you people helping mm. and of course you had your valet and right, your, right. Uh... well of course obviously we had, <laughs> we had and the various, ladies maid we had we had the chamber the chambermaids and the, <laughs> oh I mean we did you know we stayed in hotels they have yeah. cha- I, we we traveled like royalty. Mm. Uh, which is we, which becomes a strange juxtaposition when you are faced with the abject poverty that is everywhere uh, uh. in India. 
And that's kind of like that was the big thing for me. You know about it, right? You everybody you knows about. We've seen Slumdog Millionaire, right? Right, and we've seen you know, you know I yeah we've seen all of these things. We know that that there is poverty. Mm-hmm. People told me that you'll see you know you'll see a billion dollar building on one side, and I think Anthony Bourdain was talking about this on one of his shows. Is that who told you? Yes, he told okay. me specifically. Okay. <laughs> That you know, there's a there's a a billion dollar building on one side that's owned by a billionaire that's just his his you know fifteen you know fifteen story tall building or whatever. Right. And on the other side of the street is like, a is a is a slum the likes of which you've never seen. So I had heard hmm. all of this. Okay. But I just assumed that that was like sometimes. That every now and then, the rest it, of it was suburban India. No, but like <laughs> that it Strip wasn't mall, just India everywhere. <laughs> I assumed that there were, you know, nicer areas, and then there were shittier areas. Yeah. No, it's just all just, it's like the Kentucky Fried Chicken Famous Bowl. It's just everything jammed in there with no rhyme or reason to it whatsoever. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I want KFC on that shit. Yeah. Which, by the way. Are there KFC in India? There are KFCs in India. No way. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not good. No? No. No, you don't want to eat there. Huh. Anyway, and so huh. so the uh, the it was it was a shock to the system, and and uh, everyone that goes to India will tell you that it's just an assault on all senses. Right. Every sense that you can imagine that you have uh, is going to be assaulted instantly. So it's like walking into a casino. It's like walking into a casino where. Uh, cows are roaming free, and mm. and stray dogs, mm. thought by the thousands, mm. Mm. are just everywhere, mm. and poop is all over the place. And mm. it's a shitty casino. Don't go to that casino. Do not go to that casino. <laughs> the the Taj the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. except the Taj Mahal is nice. Yeah. Well, yes, it is actually. Yeah. Um, I just get yeah, so the so here here are the the some of the things that happened to me i now i uh i will admit to my listeners that i have an anxiety disorder i already have a disorder that makes things like this hard for me okay but it took me so damned long to become okay enough to just look past the poverty yeah. and experience the country just as an as an experience did you take any chemical aid along with you, like yeah, some clonopin or something? They don't work for me, unfortunately. Uh, my like my high ten, tolerance ten for... Ten clonopin? <laughs> I should have. <laughs> should just pop in Xanax like they're Pez <laughs> is what I should have done. But no, I mean, it was. It, I'm, I normally can self-regulate quite well, but this was just so hard, and it mm. took me days. I was m- most of the first week into it before I could even handle it. There was one moment, especially... You know, we weren't staying in Mumbai. We weren't looking at anything in Mumbai, but we had to fly into Mumbai. We had to spend one night so that we could fly to the other, the next destination. We were right. going okay. to a place sure. called Aurangabad, which was... is not easy to get to. Not everywhere flies into it, so you got to go to Mumbai. Okay. So we stayed in a hotel that was right near the airport. Sure. Okay. Yeah. You know, a ten-minute drive oh. within within sight so of the airport. Probably a nice nicer part of town. We, it, I don't know the nicer part of town is a phrase that is used in uh, in India <laughs> because every part of town has some might have some nice but also has the the most extreme poverty you can imagine just driving from the airport to this four and a half to five star luxury hotel right you have to drive past these tents that are set up on the side of the road or on the road itself so <sighs> That are people like who are, and they they will come and they will knock on your window if your car is stopped, and they will beg from you, and they will try to sell you a trinket that is junk yeah. that no one could possibly care about. Right? Just so just shocking. So what, what? So it's shocking, but like, what's going through your head at this point? Like, like you you have to becoming be becoming very aware of. Your privilege, yeah, clearly. Um, but like, like you're also having to, in at the same time, fortify yourself in a way that you never had to, yeah, against the the the, the, the guilt that comes along with privilege. To me, it wasn't. Times. To me, it wasn't about guilt. 
because okay. because guilt I'm not I'm not prone to guilt. I'm especially for something that I I mean I didn't have anything to do with me being in the in the privileged situation that I'm in. Right. I just lucked into it. Right. I have nothing to be feel guilty about that I'm white male. Right. But straight. The, the, there's a phenomenon of white guilt. Right. Right. I, yeah. Typically, I, like the, the, we sure. the, we throw we throw that. For, it's probably not phrased perfectly. Yeah. To really sum up what it is, but the, this idea that that happens in this country a lot of times when when you've faced your privilege. Right. And the emotions that you then go through after that. Right. And I definitely feel strong emotions about it for me it's not guilt but for me there i I, what some of the things that i did feel were this i i felt um helplessness Mm. like this very extreme helplessness where i really want to help these people but they tell you not to even give to the beggars Mm. because because begging in india is largely controlled by essentially cartels of people who will who will kidnap children out of their homes and put them to work on the street and they keep the money and barely keep these kids alive and there are horror stories about them you know breaking a kid's legs because kids crippled kids do better get more money than 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 you know kids with able bodies it's it's just and you can't it's so, unimaginable so the idea that giving you know, giving to these people is not helping them. It's actually just supporting the structure that's keeping them down. Right. I can't. So, so yeah, you're completely helpless. What the hell are you going to do? I, my mind was constantly racing. Like, how, how can this be solved? What could possibly help? And this, the problem is so systematic, so mm-hmm. systemic, and so right. and so large in its scale that obviously there's nothing that I can do to help. Did you I mean, feel a sense of like? How could I possibly have come here as a tourist? Like, I, like, I just, I, you know, like, I that seems like something that I would, I would be like, how in God's name am I here? Like, like what, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, there is like, a, there is a sense of just. I mean, I, mean, I guess the, the sheer volume of it, the 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 overwhelmingness of it, would clearly lead more to the sense of helplessness, probably more than anything. But like. Just like I don't know, like, and at some point, and this is a, this is a point that everyone that goes to India will have to face. You have to just give up. Hmm. You have to just say, "I have nothing that I can offer here. I might as well, if I'm going to see anything in this country and not vomit, which I almost did. Uh-huh. Uh, instead, I just wept a little bit. But if I'm going to continue on in this country, I have to be able to just be okay." Well, then that explains <laughs> explains the continued horror of the country. Well, I guess because I mean, to li- if you live there, first of all, if you live there, if you grew up there, then you grow with, you, you grew up with that being just the system. Yeah, right. But when whenever if you ever had the moment of of being like, holy shit, you know mm-hmm. that something must be done, and having that sense of helplessness, and coming to some of these same conclusions, then then what would you do? It seems like you would just throw your hands up in the air and be like, I, I can do this small thing over here right. and that's all I can do, but it's not, it's a drop in the bucket as to right. like what needs to happen. Well, and, country. and, and it's not, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a country that I understand enough to even, yeah. to even know where to start. I right. mean, even if I wanted to find a, a charity that helps, how do I know which charity is actually doing anything that's right. good? It's worth, it's worth looking into. Right. Uh, and, and, and I, and I encourage people to look into charities that help right. India but but look into them and see if they're actually doing anything that's useful. Yeah. I'll tell you what though, it's inspiring enough. It and uh, by inspiring mean, inspiring I mean like you thoughtful feeling people who mm-hmm. go there. I mean it's enough to 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 take a guy who used to who was you know, who was born in India. There mm-hmm. was a guy who was born in India went and studied in London, became a lawyer, lived in South Africa, mm-hmm. and was a successful lawyer for 20 years in South Africa, and then gave up everything to go back to India to help, mm-hmm. because he could. Mm-hmm. And that guy was Gandhi. Right. And he actually made a pretty big difference. Yeah. Yeah. And that difference is, you can see that difference happening. So this is, th- there is some hope, because you, you know, especially when you go into the big cities, when you go into Delhi, mm-hmm. for instance, you can see... That there are changes going on. Women are wearing uh, modern dress, mm. Western dress, okay. which I, I'm 
to me, you know, I don't care what you're wearing, but what it shows is that women are feeling free to wear the things that they want to wear, that sure. they're comfortable wearing, okay. rather than feeling like they're bound to wear the sari, right. which is the traditional uh, garb of the women. And, uh, you know, I, and and you see women driving in the cities, which you mm. don't really see in much uh, in the in the. And by the way, driving there is just crazy. <laughs> just I mean, I, I've driven in Eastern Europe. Uh -huh. I've driven like myself. I drove in Eastern Europe and right. saw how sort of insane they drive there. But holy shit, it's a different world when. Uh, so you I, don't even you know how to explain it. You wouldn't recommend getting a rental car. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't ever, ever drive there. Uh, go Get yourself into an experience. Someone with a with a chauffeur's license who knows how to dodge and weave. And then, and then just let go of your desire for your own life because you can't control anything and it's crazy there. So, yeah. Hmm. The, but the, so there are signs of, of hope and there are signs that things are changing. But I don't know how quickly they can change. You know, right. I, it's just, you know, I, we talked to uh, the woman who coordinated our whole trip. Our, mm -hmm. uh, in Delhi, we met her. She was she was sort of the the not the travel agent, but I don't even know how to describe her her what her role was. But she was coordinating everything from Delhi. Okay. She was our sort of point person. Okay. And we met her in Delhi, and oh, it, cool. it was great to meet her. And she's a, a very modern woman. She speaks fantastic English and as well as several other languages. And, you know, my mom asked her about, well, what, what about homosexuals? Is that a thing? What, what, what do you think about that? And she was like, oh, yeah. I mean, in Delhi, there's plenty and it's fine. Hmm. Now, recently, there was a, a big setback in the, in the Indian Supreme Court, right. which recriminalized homosexuality right. after it had been decriminalized by a lower court ruling. Right. Uh, but... It does seem like there's a uh, there's a movement that, that progress is happening the way it is in the rest of the world. Yeah, but I mean, at, at a certain extent, like, great to be making social progress, but what about like the, the poverty issue? The poverty issue. I don't know. Like, I mean, that that's the, the economic issue of the whole thing, right? Like, the huge economic disparity. Like, okay, great, you can have gay people in the slums, I guess. Yeah, well, right? and, like, but but I mean, there is you know something I mean? about. Like, I think social progress eventually equals real progress, and, and and I'll and I'll tell you how I how I see some of that. Now, there, my mom saw something in an Indian newspaper that was an ad, a big sort of, you know, quarter page ad uh -huh. that said, uh, "People in lower castes," and mm -hmm. it lists these sort of these service castes. And the caste system isn't supposed to be in place, but it's still very much in place. Right. And it says, you know, there's government assistance for you, and here's where to go to find it. And my mom thought that was great. And then she asked one of our guides about it. And our guide pointed out that it's in English, in a newspaper. And they are illiterate, largely. <laughs> and if they do read and write, it's probably in Hindi or right. one of the 18 official languages of India. Right. And maybe they were lucky enough to study some English, but if they're in those lower castes, then they weren't. Right. And it almost seems like window dressing at that it point. It probably is window dressing at that point. But those government, but the, I mean, the, so I mean, the government is clearly everyone that we talk to, and I, you know, we got to have long and in depth conversations with several of our guides. Mm -hmm. uh, they all were very clear that, especially on the on the state slash provincial level, mm -hmm. the governments. Base it's bought and sold. Wow! It's 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 if you can afford them, they're great to have. Wow. But I mean, if you need infrastructure, if you need anything, and if you see some of the photos that I took of just like how their power lines are set up on their mm. on the thing, mm -hmm. it's terrifying. Right? It's no wonder that power went out in our luxury hotels four or five different times in different places. Really? Oh yeah. Huh? Oh yeah. I mean, Crazy. and these are luxury hotels. Right. Which which you can afford in India because you know it's India. Right. Hmm. <sighs> All right. I could we I should have I should do like church reviews. I went to dozens of temples. I went to Hindu temples. I went hmm. to Buddhist places. Places. I went to, to Jainist places. And tell us about your favorite. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there was the, the coolest one. We, we went to the caves of uh, of 
Ajunta and Elora, which are which are just these temples, ancient, uh-huh. some of them going back like 300 AD, that were chiseled out of the very rock. Wow. Carved out of the stone itself. Mm. And they're these amazing structures, and they're, they're gorgeous, and that was pretty cool. Hmm. That was pretty cool. But, I, I mean, I also went to um, mosques and uh, the Baha'i Temple, the, Ooh, the Baha'i. Lotus Temple of, no way. in Delhi. No way. Yeah. Huh. Kind of reminded me. It's, it's shaped like a lotus. Mm. But in that, in the sense that it's like so representational of a thing, kind of reminded me of the uh, the reorganized LDS Church, the Community of Christ Temple with its, oh, with yeah. its okay. shell, spirally nautilus shell shape. Right, it was interesting. A little, a little too much. Uh, yeah, but but it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done, Baha'i. Yeah, they, awesome. They but did it. Well, welcome home, Dan. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you guys have anything to chime in about your travels, what you've learned about humanity mm. on your travels, mm. you're, you're you're welcome to get in touch with us. You can do it by uh, by uh, emailing us podcast at thankgodimatheist dot com, or you can leave us a voicemail at four two four six 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 eight four four two. Or you can uh, go onto the Facebook at facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. Uh, we need to thank our donors. We've got, we've, we've, we've got a few donors. Um, Jonathan is now a monthly subscriber. Very generous. Thank awesome. you, Jonathan. Thank you. Dan has, has given us a donation. Uh, and, thank you, Dan. And Mark as well. Uh, if you want to donate to our podcast and help make this happen because we can't do it on our own. Um, what you can do is go to thankgodimatheist.com and click on the support button. Yeah. Very nice. And there's a couple different ways you can support us. And we, we really appreciate appreciate it. However you can. Um, and we really do appreciate however you can. Some people give, uh, some people apologize for the, for the amount of their donation and the fact that you're donating at all means the world to us. Yeah. Of course, those of you who are rich, come on. Pony up. <laughs> we're tra- yeah, we're trying to get a new website going, guys. We are. It's hard. It's, it's been tough. It's not free. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks uh, to the Red Rock Hot Club for the music. And, of course, thanks to Mackenzie for all of her help online and uh, keeping that whole thing going on Facebook. Yeah. So, thanks, and, everyone. Uh, we'll uh, talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.